Hey, I'm Joel Duff. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while. I don't have a lot of time to do any recording, and um, but I couldn't help myself at this one. Yeah, I'm very agitated. Um, you might not be able to tell because I gave myself 48 hours after watching this video before I could talk about it. I said, you need a 48-hour cooling down period before you can respond to this Answers in Genesis video. Because I would have lost it if I had done this right away. So I'm calmer, but I can't promise that I'll be staying calm uh, as I talk through this example of Answers in Genesis lying to its audience. And yes, I'm going to use the word lying, which I rarely use. I usually say misunderstanding, um, you know, uh, misconceptions. These are lies, and I need to demonstrate uh, these lies to you. So in this video, most Christians don't know this about the fossil record. I'm not sure what this is because there's a lot of things packed into this particular uh, video, many of which are misconceptions and lies. Uh, but I've picked one out that represents something that really galls me, all right? Uh, something that frustrates me about the presentation of young earth creationist uh, organizations such as this to their audience and how they lie and misrepresent material to their audience, giving them a false impression of what others believe. That's lying, right? It just it is a lie. Now, Joel, what lie are you talking about? Why are you so upset today? Let me play you a short clip from this video by Kevin Hasbell. Uh, he's a relatively recent speaker. I don't think he's a full-time employee at Answers in Genesis. Uh, he, because Answers in Genesis says, in his day job, Kevin Has Hadsell is an aeronautic engineer conducting acquisition systems engineering in support of the C-131 uh, J system program. Actually, my son does something very similar to that in terms of his job as an engineer for uh, the military. Um, and I know that the you know that, that systems acquisition, uh, conducting acquisition is basically looking over charts to make sure that the specs are right and then placing orders uh, for supplies. All right, and so his his academic background is as an engineer. Now, of course, what he's doing here at Answers in Genesis is he's acting as a paleontology expert. All right, geology, paleontology. Uh, an evolutionary biologist, right? He's going to critique those particular areas and doesn't have any background in any of these things. This is a serious problem in Answers in Genesis in terms of not having experts who uh, understand the material and are well-read in, in this content in order to be able to judge it and be able to bring it accurately and present. So uh, partially I'm going to give um, Kevin a, a pass on this presentation, right? The content of this presentation is not getting a pass. I'm going to give Kevin a pass because what he's doing is he's simply reading off the slides. He has been present. You know, it's like, hey, we need we we have these talks every day at Answers in Genesis and at the at the Ark Encounter uh, for those who are coming through, uh, and um, he's an eager and willing speaker for them. Um, so here's a set of slides. We've already composed all the material. And you can read the information off the slides, and that's exactly what he does. All right, he is reading off the slides. Uh, he is not ad libbing and adding anything to what he's been given. All right, I still hold him responsible for the information he's presenting. After all, he's taken on the responsibility of saying, "All right, here's I am presenting information to an audience, and he believes it to be true." but he hasn't fact-checked the material. He simply has innate trust in those who gave him that material. Um, and so it's natural that he can easily lie to his audience because he is unaware that it's a lie. He's unaware that lies are coming from his mouth. We got to get to the lie. All right, let's get to it. Let's show you the video. Then we'll circle back around and we're going to like trace the history of this lie and show how Answers in Genesis has had 16 years, right, to figure this out. 16 years and multiple different interactions uh, with them, people informing them of this lie that they're telling. And yet, 
Kevin Hasdell just a few days ago got up and said the same thing again. This is what uh, upsets me the most, right? The obstinate um, use of outright lies, right? Without any, any introspection on their part, without, without doing any self-reflection on what, what they mean, what they think is true. But let's save the psychoanalysis for later. Here we go. Now, we have whole separate presentations on, on dinosaurs, but I wanna talk just briefly about dinosaurs here. Evolutionists are often under the impression that we don't find modern day mammals and other creatures buried with dinosaurs. Actually, we do. We find nautilus, beetles, crayfish, lobsters, beavers, squirrels, flamingos, hedgehogs, cormorants, sharks, dragonflies, parrots, rabbits, horseshoe crabs, sandpipers, grasshoppers, crickets. All buried with dinosaurs. Okie dokie. There we are. So, um, we're not even going to talk about all the lies that he just told. Let's just focus in on one at first, and I'll give you some other examples. Um, so, he's making the argument that, look, you know, people don't show that there's modern mammals living alongside dinosaurs right if the flood you know was all these different organisms lived before the flood they all live together and so it shouldn't be surprising from a young earth creationist perspective to find all the different kinds of organisms intermingled with each other in the fossil record right we should find we shouldn't find a disconnect between say dinosaurs and um, primates right or even dinosaurs and humans Right? Even though we haven't found a dinosaur and a human together, young earth creationists would expect those to be together, be found together potentially in the future. But, and so here they're saying, look, but there are mammals. There are modern organisms. Now, where modern is a little bit tricky here, but I, you know, he's trying to indicate to you that uh, these are things that you're familiar with, right? Organisms that you know, they lived right alongside the dinosaurs. And evolutionists, they don't want you to know this because these organisms couldn't have lived along with the dinosaurs because these are more recently evolved organisms. And therefore, we shouldn't find them mixed with dinosaurs. So he's setting up a contrast between the young earth creationist and the evolutionary paradigm for understanding Earth's history. And here's the examples he gave. You heard him list off the examples that evolutionists say shouldn't be there, and yet, what do we really find? We find beavers, we find squirrels, we find flamingos, we find albatrosses, we find rabbits, we find parrots, we find plovers. But I'm just focused on the mammals there. Um, do we find those particular organisms mixed with dinosaurs? Right? Is he true? Is this an accurate statement? that beavers have been found with dinosaurs, modern beavers? The answer is no, absolutely not. I know of no fossil that represents an individual of the beaver kind. And the beaver kind, we're gonna, we're gonna expand to be kind of like that family of organisms that includes the beavers. The answers in Genesis acknowledges Beavers are not just a single species of beaver, but there's a number of different things that we call beavers. And they all have an origin, right? From God's original kind creation of a beaver kind. And so Answers in Genesis says that that happened well before the flood, right? Happened in the creation. Therefore, there should be beavers preserved in the fossil record of, of members of the beaver kind. And they could very well be found with dinosaurs. And according to uh, this speaker, we have found beavers alongside dinosaurs, right? That's confirmation of the creationist mantra that we would find all these modern type of kinds with the dinosaurs. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. This is a lie. There is no beaver that has been found along with dinosaurs. So you're going to be asking, like, well, where did he get this idea that there was a beaver found with the dinosaurs? I can tell you exactly where he got that idea. I can tell you where he, know, where he got the idea of a squirrel 
and a rabbit and a parrot and a flamingo. All of these things have been reported in the literature to have been found in um, rocks from the dinosaur age. But none of these have been reported as being actually members of that kind of organism. There's a beaver-like organism that has been found in the fossil record. Beaver-like doesn't mean it is a beaver. It simply means like, hey, here's an organism that has the appearance, has some characteristics that are similar to beavers, because kind of this flat tail. And um, it's unlike anything we've ever seen, but it has these characteristics that remind us of a beaver, and therefore we're going to call it the Jurassic beaver. But it is not a beaver in the sense that this organism is related to the beavers that we have alive today. They're not related to the beavers that we have alive today. They're part of it. They've been classified if this author right here, if Kevin had gone back and looked at the source material and read it, he would have realized beyond the very first title of the line uh, of the article that it describes the characteristics of this beaver as being kind of a mixture of three or four different organisms, but because of the tail characteristics, they called it, they gave it a name, sort of like a, you know, an, an homage to beavers that are alive today. Like, hey, we found something that has like this beaver-like characteristic, and so we'll give it a scientific name that includes the, the idea of cast, that actually has the word caster in it, which is the genus for beavers. Um, but they put it in a whole different order, and they recognize it as not even being a modern mammal. It's in the mammal formies group, which is a group of things that are very mammal-like, but unsure whether they're exactly the same as all the modern mammals, or all modern mammals have certain traits that unify all of them, right? Having hair, uh, giving, uh, producing milk, right? Other anatomical features that, that unify all mammals, and we would say you're in the mammalia. This is an organism that's not been assigned even to being a mammal, a modern mammal, much less being a beaver. So you heard him right here. He is presenting this as to his audience as beavers have been found along with dinosaurs. And guess what? The same thing is true for squirrels. It's a bizarre organism, has a squirrel-like habit, not thought at all to be related to modern squirrels or even a rodent at all. Doesn't have all the, have the characteristics of a rodent. And yet it's, it's called like the squirrel-like form. Now, one of the reasons this is done in the literature is because this is a time during the, the age of the dinosaurs in which there aren't any true rodents, right? There aren't any true beavers. There aren't any true canines, right? There aren't any true albatrosses. There aren't any true rabbits, right? And because all of those don't exist at that time, no member of the, the modern groups that we understand today are represented in that uh, time period. When something, and when a fossil is found that has some trait, like in the case of the uh, uh, flamingo, right? There's a trait of a fossil that has a, a, a kind of a, um, a habit of potentially having the same kind of filter feeding apparatus right, in its jaws, right, so it's, it's not exactly analogous to a flamingo, and the rest of the bird doesn't seem to have the same characteristics. Uh, there's also something called the flamingo pterosaur. Uh, that doesn't mean that pterosaur was a flamingo, right, it just means it has a certain characteristic that reminds people of a flamingo. And so there is a, there is a fossil that reminds people of a flamingo, and since there is no other organism that it's similar to. We tend to name things based on what they seem similar to, even if we're not claiming that there's any actual relationship to those organisms. Right? So there is no flamingo living with dinosaurs. There's a flamingo-like organism that has been found that is a different kind of organism, but it happens to have some similar traits to flamingos. The squirrel's the same way. The beaver's the same way. The rabbit is the same way. The cormorant is the same way. The parrot is the same way. All of these are stories of fossils that have been described 
as parrot-like, rabbit-like, beaver-like, and yet have been classified in completely different groups unrelated to those organisms. And yet this speaker, not just this speaker, many speakers at Answers in Genesis who use these same slides, get up, tell their audience that beavers have been found alongside dinosaurs. That's a false statement. It is a false statement if you read beyond the headline in the literature, if you do any research. Answers in Genesis is a multi-million dollar organization and can't afford to do very basic research. Just do some fundamental fact checking. They can't seem to do that. They're content to have their facts wrong and continue to present them incorrectly over and over and over again. But this gets worse. Sorry, I'm starting to get wound up. I'm going to show you that they're aware of these errors and they don't care. They don't care. Um, where shall I begin? Where shall I begin? Let's go with the beaver story. This is where we'll begin. Okay, so where should we begin? Let's go back. Let's build out this story of the beaver and then look at how it's being presented at Answers in Genesis. So it all stems from this article from 2006 in The New Scientist. No, actually, it's not from this article. There's an actual research article. The New Scientist is simply a um, promoting that particular article, right? Uh, and so that's a science writing public communication site and they gave this title giraffic beaver find stuns experts now this is a clickbaity art yeah? definitely a clickbaity title much like all answers in genesis titles on their videos right jurassic beaver stuns experts and i admit you would get the impression from this like oh they found a beaver in the jurassic like a, like a, a modern day beaver living in the Jurassic with the dinosaurs. I'm sure, and I'm sure younger creationists see this, these types of titles and they get all excited. It's like, look at that. Like evolutionary biologists wouldn't expect to have a modern beaver living in the dinosaur age. They say that those types of mammals evolved after the dinosaurs were gone. Now first note that Jurassic beaver is in quotes here, right? And then let's look down and see, discover of Jurassic beaver-like creature suggests early mammals were more diverse than originally thought. What's interesting about this particular fossil is that it represents an organism that has some very diverse characteristics and it's actually relatively a large organism. Uh, and in 2006, the vast majority of known mammal fossils from the Jurassic, Cretaceous, and Triassic uh, were very small sort of rodent type animals that were mostly nocturnal. And here we have this beaver-like organism uh, that was found. And so this is a little more, this, this stretches the amount of uh, morphological diversity that has been found in the dinosaur age of mammalian or mammal-like fossils. Not all necessarily actual mammals in terms of the stem group or everything that we consider to be modern mammals. Um, the discovery of this remarkably preserved fossil of a beaver-like mammal doesn't mean it's a beaver. It just means it's like a beaver. Lived 164 million years ago, um, looking as if it was put together from pieces of platypus, river otter, and beaver. Creatures nearly a, mil a, a meter long, so forth. All right. Notice that it looks like the combination of multiple different kinds of critters, river otter, beaver, platypus. Um, so this is not any organism that's alive today, right? This is a strange, weird organism, right? With a mixture of characteristics and therefore is not in the same group of any modern organism that you and I are familiar with. You can't classify this into anything that is living today including the beavers All right so that's the gist of that now this is the reference that is used now i'm showing this i'm showing you this instead of the original research article that fully describes this organism because as far as i can tell no young earth creationist has referred to the original research they've only referred to this popular story 
and they often just quote this this title jurassic beaver um spine stuns experts oh experts are just they're stunned they don't know what to do with this they're not really stunned this is just an over uh this is, like i said a clickbait title okay now this gets more interesting if it's just like okay so they're they're wrong about this this isn't really exactly like a beaver but maybe you can make the argument that this is a relative a distant relative of modern beavers and you know what answers in genesis likes to do They'd like to say that you know the beaver kind existed before the flood but it didn't necessarily look like the beaver kind today Today's beaver kind has evolved from the ancestors that were on the ark. And so the original beaver kind might have looked somewhat different. And so it might still be, you, they still might be right that this is a beaver. And that beaver then just had different appearance in the past than it does in the present. So it doesn't have the modern appearance, but it is a modern beaver in the sense that it's the same kind of beaver that God created from the very beginning. Right. This is, in fact, what Calvin Smith has argued right, in his articles. Uh, Calvin Smith, the CEO of, of Answers in Genesis uh, uh, Canada. He's one of the smoothest talking liars all right, on these types of topics. Because in his case, he is aware that this is not really exactly like beavers. Right? This isn't a modern beaver. And yet he tries to employ this, well, it really is connected somehow through its history. But now here's the irony of that. Now, I'm, going to, I'm just going to show you some of my notes uh, rather than go to the original articles. Um, here I'm going to show you what Kurt Wise had to say. Kurt Wise is a um, sort of a, he's a well-known young earth creationist with an actual paleontological background. Um, and what Kurt Wise uh, said in 2006, because he commented on this 2006 discovery, all right, he wrote in 2006 that he, and he did not call this a beaver, right? Explicitly didn't call it a beaver. He recognized for what it was, what it is. It's a uh, docodont, right? And that's what's described in the original research paper. This thing is described in the original research as a docodont. And a docodont is a member of uh, the mammaliforms, right? So you have your synapsids, right? Which are reptile kind of like things, but also have mammalian characteristics. And uh, those are like in the Triassic and uh, got to enormous sizes. Um, and there's hundreds of different species. And for young earth creationists, you know, many, many, many different kinds. And young earth creationists admit they're all extinct. Uh, and then there are uh, members of organisms that are similar to the synapsids that are called the mammal-like, you know, much more mammal-like mammaliforms, right? Psychodonts. And then the doc docodonts are actually considered to be a, a part of that group of the psychodonts, right? And they're groups that have no descendants today. Docodons aren't considered to have any descendants today. None of them are alive today. It's a group side branch that went extinct. These organisms left no descendants. And so some of these organisms developed features and characteristics which had similarities to some modern organisms, but they themselves didn't leave any descendants which are those modern organisms that, or things that are alive today. Now, interestingly here, and this is where uh, I can say definitively that this speaker is lying about beavers because he's not aware of the young earth creationist material itself. Right here, Kurt Wise in 2006, published on the Answers in Genesis website, talks about this being a docodont, an extinct mammaliform group without any known living descendant. Well, since beavers are living today, and they're not descendant of or related to this particular thing. They therefore are not beavers. They're not the beaver kind. This speaker is talking about the beaver kind has been found in the Jurassic. This is the only fossil, the only fossil that anyone has ever said looks anything like a beaver.
that has ever been found in the entire age of the dinosaurs. There are no other fossils of things that anyone thinks is a beaver. The nearest beaver we have, nearest fossil that looks like a beaver, a modern day beaver that can be described to the group of, of, of organisms we call beavers today is only like 30 million years old. All right, very, very recent. So uh, Kurt Wise admitted that there are mammals with the dinosaurs and they're smaller and they're not like today's mammals. Now, Kurt Wise, of course, has been branded by Anches and Genesis as a bad creationist and one of those young earth evolutionists. Nonetheless, this particular article is still found on Anches and Genesis website, right? They haven't managed to scrub this one of, of uh, Kurt Wise's yet. Um, yeah, swimming with the dinosaurs, Kurt Wise, in another way, in the creation model, Castrocotta is another example of God's fascinating design in pre-flood organisms. In the evolution model, Castrocotta, that's the name of this beaver-like fossil from the Jurassic, is a surprise and challenge. Fossils that might, be for, might form mammals are rarely found in the same rocks as dinosaurs. And a few have been found to be tiny shrew-like animals. Last week, new fossils were described of a remarkable fossil in a dinosaur-bearing Middle Jurassic rocks in China. So this is his introduction to that fossil, which he then concludes is, just as evolutionary biologists and paleogeologists conclude, not an actual beaver, but some other kind of form of organism, some other kind. Now, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but maybe just like uh, um, uh, Calvin Smith's going to say, he's going to say, that's just the primitive form of the beaver we have today. The beaver we have today evolved from this beaver-like thing that lived in the Jurassic. And so there's a continuity between those organisms. Um, okay, have, has Calvin Smith been to the Answers in Gen has they Has he been to the Ark Encounter or the Creation Museum? Because if I scroll down here and we go to, this is a screenshot, all right? A photo of a wall at the Ark Encounter, all right? which shows all the different kinds, right? Here's what we think all the kinds of organisms are that were on the ark, right? And they're broken down into extinct kinds, ones that we know don't exist today, but they had to have been on the ark and preserved on the ark, like all those dinosaur kinds, but the dinosaur kinds went extinct soon after getting off of the ark. And if I scroll down here, we're looking at mammals extinct. Sorry, this is probably gonna be hard for you to see. You'll just have to trust me on this one, but this third um, family name or genus name, this is a group that they're saying is a kind that was on the ark, right? Docodonta. Right? So they have listed Docodonta as, because by the way, this particular fossil, that's the beaver-like fossil, isn't the only member of this particular family that's been ascribed to this, um, this paleontological or extinct family. Right, and not all the other members of that have that exact, you know, beaver-like form, but they share other characteristics that do unify them right, into a group that's recognized as the Docanta, right, or Docodonta probably. And so here we get we get this: the Docodonta at Answers in Genesis is on a board of extinct groups, extinct families. Distinct families that were created, distinct kinds that God created that were on the ark, but then didn't survive afterwards, and we have no modern members of. Now, if I remember right, we have beavers that are alive today, right? Answers in Genesis places beavers in a different family, a different kind, and they're listed under the living kinds. So their own material, right? Kurt Wise mentions it. And then on the Ark Encounter, we've got a list that lists this Jurassic beaver as a different kind of organism unrelated to modern beavers. Which one's right? This is a mixed message, right? This is a mixed message that Answers in Genesis is sending out. They're saying God created two separate kinds of things. This one kind lived in the in uh, prior to the flood and was preserved with the dinosaurs. You've got this other kind, beavers, right? 
And they also lived before the flood. However, they left not a single trace of evidence that we have found yet, right? Sure, go out and show me that there are beavers in the fossil record of the global flood fossil record, not the post-flood fossil record. Right? Answers in Genesis will say there aren't any. Right? That beavers, modern beavers, only show up after the flood. And they have no physical evidence they ever existed prior to that. Right? But this author is out there telling its audience that, look, all these modern organisms were living with dinosaurs. They must have been because we find their fossils in the same strata with those dinosaurs. So let me just, let's go back to this quote here. Modern groups of placental mammals are not found among the dinosaurs. This is Kurt Weiss speaking again. Only mammaliforms and some marsupials, which are considered the, the oldest uh, of the mammals. All right, in the evolutionary um, understanding. All right, that's what's found with dinosaurs. Mammaliforms. The whole group of different kinds of things that have very mammal-like characteristics. And we might call actual mammals, but all of them are extinct. And then later they're replaced, right, through a different lineage with all the different modern mammals. Right, which are all basically post-flood. This suggests that placental mammals may not have lived with dinosaurs. Right, and placental mammals are the vast majority of mammals. Oh, yeah, real quick, that other um, uh, beaver-like thing would have laid eggs, right? That's part of the, the uh, Dacodonta um, group, is that we're pretty sure that all those were egg layers. In fact, all those mammaliforms, we think that almost every single one, uh, probably every one of them, were egg layers, kind of like the platypus, right? So that's a very different lifestyle, very different characteristic laying eggs versus having a placental uh, relationship, all right, or you know, being a placental organism, which is what all beavers, modern beavers, are. So that's another reason why those two don't really work together as being the same kind, because then you would have a situation where you have a kind that's a placental and an egg layer in the same kind. How would you have that much diversity uh, within a kind, created kind? Now, I wrote some notes down here about Calvin Smith because I started looking into Calvin, what Calvin Smith has to say about this because he wrote recently about the same thing. He's made the same statements about these various different types of organisms that are modern mammals that lived with the dinosaurs and therefore checkmate evolutionary biology as being erroneous and lying. Uh, but he is the liar because he's actually lying about those organisms being found in the uh, fossil record at the time of the, of the dinosaur age. Um, so Calvin Smith is worse than this particular speaker. This speaker, as I said before, is just reading from the, he's an engineer. He's gung-ho on young earth creationist material. So he's just read a bunch of creationist material. He's sucked it all up, believes everything he's read because these are people he trusts. And then it's like given an opportunity, I could get to go to the Oregon County, I get to give a talk. And um, I'm not making this stuff up myself. I'm simply using their materials and I am speaking their words, right? He didn't think to fact check this stuff. He didn't go to the original research and find out, was there an actual beaver? Like, is this an actual beaver of the beaver kind that was found in the fossil record? No, he simply is just reading the lines off the script. And so he is lying, all right? And he is a liar, um, but I give him a bit of a pass uh, on that. But who I don't give a pass to would be Calvin Smith because Calvin Smith is aware that he is lying and he continues to lie. All right, and I'll show this this way. Calvin Smith knows that he's lying because he's been made aware of this. Now he's been made aware of it because I have said this in the past before. Multiple other Christians have told him, not necessarily directly, but through their literature, and if he is at all interested in understanding the creation science, um, uh, you know, world, you know, and, and what's out there, he should be aware of the criticisms, and he might want to actually test his own ideas uh, from that. But I also know that he's been directly confronted on this particular error, and he has chosen to ignore it, and I'm going to show you where. So this is it from an article um, that wrote about dinosaurs. Um, what was it? 
Yeah, this is from an article just in 2022, which he's talking about. Art yeah, let, let me just go right to the article. So here we have Calvin Smith in 2022, right, on his blog. Um, dinosaurs deception and disconnect, right? He's accusing um, evolutionary biologists and secular scientists of deception when it comes to dinosaurs. And one of the deceptions is that they don't show uh, the real nature of the fossil record, which is that there's modern mammals that lived with the dinosaurs. And for some reason, we don't want to show that because that would give up the give up the story. OK, uh, and so let's just scroll down to where he actually mentions that. As I mentioned earlier, reading books about dinosaurs as a child that considered the idea of dinosaurs and mammals coexisting a, a ridiculous notion. It was never a ridiculous notion. All right. It's been known really since the, the beginning of the fossil record that there are small mammal-like organisms that are found in the fossil record in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. So that would be alongside dinosaurs. Not been a lot of attention paid to those. If they're not the dramatic organisms, right? And yet at times went on. And yet at times when this evidence continued to pile up to the point they are today, evolutionists are admitting the following. Mammals are just one such important group that lived with the dinosaurs, coexisted with the dinosaurs, and survived with the dinosaurs. Yes, now they admit that today. Great. Why aren't we equipping them? With all this information and so much more that supports biblical creation, why is the church not able to equip the young people to understand topics like dinosaurs from a wholly biblical point of view? The biblical point of view being Dinosaurs and mammals should have lived together because they were all created at the same time. So every single mammal you know about, canines, foxes, right? Cats, bears, beavers, um, primates, all of those existed prior to the flood and therefore should be captured in the flood record, right? They should all be found in the flood. Rocks. That's a biblical worldview. That's the expectation. And so here we're saying, oh, look, see, there are some of these mammal groups that are found in the fossil record that evolutionists don't usually talk about. And so this is more evidence for the creationist point of view. Not to, you know, they're not mentioning that there aren't any canines and there aren't any, you know, there aren't any cats and there aren't any primates and there aren't any hippos and there aren't any, I mean, we could go on and on and on about all the different modern mammal groups, families, um, that we have found no evidence in the, in the dinosaur age at all. Um, but hopefully they found these few, right? And that, that sort of breaks the case down. In my experience, it's because parents and church workers themselves are unaware of the evidence and so are unequipped to teach it. And even worse, others have adopted evolutionary ideas into their thinking, don't understand how damaging this is to the biblical worldview, right? Hey, we just, you know, we're not, a, our, our church members, they're not aware that the evidence exists. This is evident. There are beavers that are found there. So now I have to go back to my notes because I don't have the uh, link to the original article. But the year before what I was just reading you, where Calvin Smith is saying, hey, there were beavers. There were these different things in the fossil record that we have found with dinosaurs. And we need to tell people about this stuff because it fits the creationist model. The year before, he had written another article, very similar, about uh, fossils that are out of place and uh, that, that this is pure, pure, purely evidence uh, for young earth creationism. And there was this section in that. But they really, but they weren't really what creationists say they were. Hmm, isn't that kind of what I'm saying here? I'm saying that beaver isn't what creationists are saying it was. I'm saying it wasn't even a beaver. I'm saying the young earth creationists themselves say it's not a beaver because they put it in a different kind and they say that kind is extinct, right? If there's a beaver kind and there's a different kind and they're in that kind, then they're not beavers, okay? <laughs> you, you can't say beavers were in the past and this is the evidence of it if they are extinct and don't exist today and they're not related to modern day beavers. Um, so Calvin Smith actually puts this little blurb in his paper the previous year. I think this is 2021. Having presented on this previously, I once had an evolutionist write to me. Right, I love how he uses the word evolutionist there. Pretty sure that's a creationist, right? A theist, right? A Christian, but he's not going to say Christian. 
right? A fellow Christian would have been it would have been nice to say a fellow Christian wrote me who uh, a fellow Christian who um, accepts evolutionary biology. Maybe that would have been a little bit nicer way of saying it. But it just says an evolutionist. An evolutionist writes to me to complain that I have been misrepresenting that I've been re what I've reported. His argument that I referenced a beaver, for example, that wasn't a true modern beaver, and that what I call a badger was actually a, and then it's this other scientific name, it's just the same situation, it's a whole different group. But somebody called it um, as, as having a badger-like characteristic, right? Badger-like, again, not saying that it was a badger or related to badger in the badger group, but just saying like, this is a group of extinct organisms that had badger-like features. Uh, just like there are little animals in uh, marsupials in Alaska, uh, Alaska, in Australia, right? Sugar gliders, right? And we have flying squirrels here. And well, people will call those organisms in Australia, um, they call them, many of them will call them a type of squirrel, right? Because they're squirrel-like. But they're not squirrels. They're in an entirely different family. They have similar features, especially the, the flying one, right? And so they have a similar overall appearance. One's a marsupial, though, and one is a placental. They're in completely different groups. But it's not outrageous to refer to them as have being squirrel-like. Just like there's badger-like and beaver-like organisms and flamingo-like organisms, right? And cormorant-like organisms that have been found as fossils that represent members of different groups that just have similar features. Uh, okay, and all of these extinct orders are said to have died out tens of millions of years ago with no modern representatives. That's what I'm saying. And guess what? That's what Answers in Genesis is saying. Answers in Genesis is saying is that extinct squirrel, I looked that one up. That extinct squirrel is in a is not a squirrel. It's in a different group. It's a mammaliform. So it's not even in the modern group of all mammals. Right? And so it's extinct and it's a different kind. So it does not represent squirrels that are alive today. Badgers, bears, uh, beavers, right? All those other organisms that were on that slide that were all mammals, every single one of them is the same story. They're not equivalent to modern day families of those organisms. They're in different families that are extinct. So the fauna of the age of the dinosaurs, the mammalian fauna of that age, is radically different than today's, and the vast majority of it is utterly extinct and is not represented by today's organisms. That's something that young Earth creationists need to explain. And by lying about this, they're trying to avoid explaining why there's such a disjunct. But let's look at Calvin Smith's response, because this is what I think maybe irks me the most. So he believed it was dishonest to say that it has been proven that dinosaurs walked alongside modern mammals and birds. Yes. When I asked him if he would be contacting National Geographic, ABC News, Nature Journals, and BBC Science Magazines to inform that they were using, they were wrong for using titles like Jurassic Beaver swims into view. Fossils suggest platypus lived in dinosaur times, or Cretaceous duck ruffles feathers. He never got back to me. This is his reaction. Oh, the hubris of this. Here's an expert that writes to me that informs me that these are not actually equivalent organisms, right? That their, their physiology, their anatomy puts them in a completely different group. We're simply uh, calling these organisms based on their similarity, like calling cities in the United States uh, names based on names from uh, cities in Europe, right? It's not the same city, right? It has similar features to it or something we, we, want, to, we want to emulate uh, from that. So what, what um, Calvin Smith has done here is he hasn't said, oh, I need to go back to that literature and really examine what it's saying. 
is this what the, the advice you're just saying like well that clickbait title you know you, you're using that clickbait title so why can't that that means uh i'm i'm excused i i can believe that those were beavers why don't you change that you're being deceptive you know i don't like those titles either really i you know i i get it they're titles because uh if you were to find a fossil that's completely different than anything modern and it's just like okay here's this fossil i'm going to describe this i'm going to give it a name that uh, is completely different than anything else and it doesn't reflect anything that you know it just be like well there's another fossil you're not going to get any headlines you're not going to get noticed at all but you say like hey this fossil is uh you know has characteristics that are like a beaver and so it probably swam in uh lakes and maybe uh used its tail in order to propel itself uh and it looks like it lived in wetlands uh and so that's how it derived those characteristics which make it similar to a beaver well then you're saying like hey in this in this habitat in the time of the dinosaurs there was an organism that lived in a similar habitat that beavers live in today. Uh, by the way, the teeth are different, so it doesn't look like it was like chopping down trees and making, um, you know, beaver huts, right? So that's that's another reason why it's not a modern beaver. Um, it's not really illegitimate to like sell that story with that catch line that there's something like a beaver especially when the article itself describes that it's not a beaver, right? It talks about the differences, right? And so Calvin Smith is just like, oh, but what are you going to do? Are you going to change those titles? If you don't change those titles, then I can just keep lying. That's what he's saying. He's saying like, I can just keep lying. I am don't, I'm not responsible for having to learn, you know, what you really mean. I'm not responsible for going to the original literature and actually reading about the fossil itself and determining why and seeing why it's described as being in a different, completely different taxonomic group. That's in the literature. Free for, um, you know, for Calvin Smith to find out. Calvin Smith's not a biologist, right? He's not a scientist at all. He's just going with the headline. But here's the bigger problem. Calvin Smith is simply trusting another young earth creationist and unwilling to do any of his own research. Who is he trusting? He's trusting Carl Warner. Carl Warner, who uh, compiles hundreds of examples of out-of-place fossils. And of those hundreds that I've looked through, oh, so, so many of them are exactly this. Carl Warner just, you know, scours the mod, you know the, the common literature right the science communication literature oh there's a squirrel found in uh, dinosaur times again it's a, it's something that has this the, the characteristics that are most similar to today's squirrels but it's not a squirrel right it's an egg laying animal <laughs> it's like that that has a kind of a, a long tail and kind of scrawny right eight different foods it has a different whole set of teeth than squirrels do that all rodents have right it's not a rodent but it's described as squirrel-like in its habit climb trees carl Warner goes oh squirrels have been found right along with dinosaurs that's the conclusion he comes from and he puts it in his book then that book rolls out and young earth creationists like those that answers in Genesis open up the book and they're like, Oh, here's all my examples. Take the picture from that. Never go look at the original literature, have complete trust in Carl Warner who himself is just a medical doctor. Who's not a paleontologist, doesn't understand phylogenies, doesn't understand, you know, these types of comparisons, right? And obviously doesn't read the literature right beyond the headlines. And then Calvin Smith comes along and is like, well, I read that headline, and since you called it that, then why can't I call it that? And then he even speculates that, well, this beaver really is just a descendant. The modern-day beavers are a descendant of this beaver. That beaver was a little bit different, but it's still the same kind. But now we have today's beavers. If he read the original research, he would find out that these beavers, beaver-like things, it's so many other different characteristics that what he's going to suggest is that one kind can become another kind. That's how much change you'd have to have, all right, to get from that Jurassic beaver-like thing 
and say that it was actually a descendant or, or an ancestor of today's modern beavers. Not to mention the fact that Answers in Genesis just admits that they're not beavers and puts them on an extinct list of other kinds. Yeah, this extinct list of mammals includes multiple different... I'm just giving you an example from beavers. But in fact, the Answers in Genesis list of extinct mammals includes four or five different mammal-like things that other creationists at the Answers in Genesis Museum giving talks talk about being representatives of modern mammals, ones that are living today, directly contradicting the signage outside the door of their venue where they're talking. Right? I don't think they, they, just, they, they don't think about um, what they're saying. They're going with Carl Warner and they're just repeating those lies over and over and over and over again because it's all throughout the literature and no one wants to take responsibility for maybe doing a little, little research and finding out that they're wrong about these things. Every time that um, uh, I've looked up no fewer than 10 different articles on Answers in Genesis by five different authors that reference modern mammals that lived with the dinosaurs. And then they usually check off a couple different examples flamingos and beavers and squirrels, right? Uh, and then they have reference. Sometimes they have references for those. Invariably, every reference is the same reference that they all use, right? Well, they use two different references. They either reference directly Carl Warner's book, the words Carl Warner said this, or if they have a reference that's not from Warner's book and it's from the original uh, source, they always go to like the new scientist, right? That, in other words, the reference that Carl Warner used, right? They just picked out the reference that was in Carl Warner's book and they put it and used it as their reference. Now, general guide is if you write an article and you use references, the idea is the author should be saying that they've looked at the references. Um, in which case they should have read those references. If they had read those references, they shouldn't be able to, in good conscience, say what they're saying in these blogs and in these talks. All right? Our speaker, it answers in Genesis, who again is just reading from a script. He's never checked these references. He, he shows the references. He's never read those references. And he certainly hasn't gone back to the original research and then asked, is this the same kind of organism, separate, separately created kind, as beavers? Right? I implore Answers in Genesis to do this basic research. Do a little basic fact-checking of what you've done. See, I've said this. I'm not the first person to say that multiple people have pointed out these really basic lies that are being told. And what makes me upset is that they have not changed their tune. They hear the lies, and what they hear, Calvin Smith hears the lies, and it's like, Oh, that evolutionist uh, suggested that that I'm wrong. Oh, well, what are they going to do about there? What are they going to do about the way that they've presented this? Because they've tricked us into thinking that these are these are really beavers. Well, if you believe that they've been tricking you into thinking beavers, you should at least care that um, that they're not actually beavers. In other words, you're like saying, um, "Well, I'm I'm trusting you. I'm trusting your source, and so I'm just going to keep trusting it." All right. That headline. I'm going to keep believing that headline, even though you've told me that that's not what it really means. Makes no sense to me. It's just the it's recapitulation of the same errors over and over and over again, with no concern and no care about the truth. Right? No concern or care about accurately representing the data. Right, perfectly happy to have that audience leave. This speaker had that audience leave the room thinking that there were beavers. You know, he showed a picture of a modern beaver, of beavers wandering around with dinosaurs, presumably making um, you know beaver ponds. Right, giving that perception that that's what that time looked like. When we have no evidence, no evidence at all that such 
a, a time existed, such a, such a situation existed at that time. But you've created that image in your um, listener's eyes, right, using bad data. And so you have created a lie that will then be perpetuated even more. Okay, I got that off my chest. Um, yeah, no, this is my call for, like, get this right. I know what I'm going to do is uh, I'm simply going to always watch all the videos that talk about this thing, like trying to show, like, oh, there's these fossils were found with dinosaurs. Right. And what I'm going to do is every time I see a speaker who doesn't qualify what they're saying as these things are like a beaver, but not necessarily the same kind as a beaver today. All right. So if they don't inform their audience of the truth, all right, I'm just going to make another video calling that out. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I'm watching. I guess is the uh, is the is the message. I'm watching for some uh, integrity in answers in Genesis because right now integrity, the words integrity and answers in Genesis are not words that go together. Um, it's the antithesis of that at this point. That's it for me. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.